Let's be honest, if you have kids, especially young kids, things that used to take little to no planning now take a heck of a lot of forethought. Do I have the diaper bag packed? Can I make it there and back without a spare bottle of formula with hot water? Will my three-year-old require snacks? What's the bathroom situation like? Yeah, so it isn't so surprising that for a lot of parents, they tend to look at life as before kids versus after kids. And I don't mean that in a bad way, but a lot of the spaces that we have curated as a society were done so with adults in mind, which makes bringing little ones along pretty challenging. But perhaps one of the most surprising differences that I found after moving to Germany after living in the United States is just how kid-centric so many everyday spaces can be. In fact, it doesn't have to be kid-specific places to find that life is just a lot easier here with little ones around. So in today's video, I'm going to be taking you along to 10 of my top spaces that I think have made one of the biggest differences as being a parent here in Germany on leading a lifestyle that quite frankly isn't so different than from what I used to have before my children arrived. These spaces that actually considered kids as part of the community and as part of the intended users from the very beginning. So let's take a look. Okay, now if you want to strike fear into the hearts of nearly any new parent, you just need to utter two words. Rest stop. Now, I think I'm pretty lucky both of my kids enjoy car rides, but any lengthy trip with a little one in diapers and a second one fresh off potty training means that I'm probably going to have to take them inside of a rest stop for a bathroom break. Now, I'll be honest with you. In the United States, not all rest stops are created equal. And there really is a continuum of good to bad, and a lot of it is based off of just how good the bathrooms are. Now, for example, this is a very nice bathroom that I would happily take my kids into. And if I'm lucky, there might be one just like it every 50 miles or so along the interstate in the United States. But in an emergency blowout situation, I might be only left with a bathroom that looks like this. In which case, I would probably rather just let my child pee into a ditch on the side of the highway than risk the need for a top-up tetanus shot. If I'm going to be honest with you, 99% of the time, even in the bathrooms in those rest stops that are really nice, you're lucky if you just have a clean baby diaper changing station that's mounted to the wall. That's pretty much the extent of child-friendly bathrooms. And yeah, I might be a little bit peeved that most of the time those are only in the women's restrooms and not in the men's, when they probably had the space to do it. And nine times out of 10, my husband would gladly take our kid to go get a new diaper. But any parent of little ones know that bathrooms pose a risk because our kids just kind of like to touch just about everything. So that's what really made all of the difference when I came to Germany and found that bathrooms can actually look like this. Not only do they have a separate room often, completely just for baby changing, but they also sometimes come with heat lamps to keep the baby warm while you change their diaper, a separate sink to wash your hands or prepare a bottle. Sometimes there's a chair if you're breastfeeding. And honestly, it's a really small detail, but the fact that there's a door that locks means that I can change my baby's diaper while my toddler is running around without risk of them leaving the bathroom altogether. Now, although I couldn't find this specific example when I was driving around for this video, I have been to a rest stop in Germany before that also had a toddler toilet in the baby changing room with a small sink that was just for them, which makes these rest stops so much easier. And again, the fact that I don't have to worry about what is my three-year-old touching and trying to help hold him over an adult-sized toilet. These spaces are just so much more thoughtful and again, makes life just so much easier. Now, next up on my list is a place that is quite frankly, one of my absolute favorite places in all of Germany, and that's DM. This place is sort of kind of like Walgreens, but without the pharmacy. But what makes it so fantastic is that the place is designed for shopping with kids. And what's really cool is not only do they have little tiny grocery carts that the kids get to push around, but while the parents are shopping, there's actually a small play area for kids. 
If you're a breastfeeding mom, there's actually a breastfeeding corner where they give you privacy and a comfy chair. And perhaps the pinnacle of the entire place is this baby changing station in the store, which comes stocked with diapers of all sizes and wet wipes completely for free. Yeah, that's right. For free. No, granted, this is a little bit of a marketing ploy because, of course, they stock the baby changing station with their diapers, which they're hoping you enjoy and inevitably end up purchasing. But I can't stress enough on just how wonderful it is to have these kind of spaces where I'm not stressed about whether or not I'm going to find a clean bathroom again, but that I can actually just go into any DM store near me and change my baby's diaper if need be. And it's because of these spaces and because they're so wonderful to take kids that I really enjoy shopping with my little ones. Even my very rambunctious three-year-old who loves to get into just about everything. But in these spaces, my kids feel welcome and I feel so much more relaxed, which again, I can't stress enough, really does make so much of a difference. Now, the next one on my list is technically a kid-friendly space. But it's the proliferation of playgrounds specifically that I have found to just be so incredible here in Germany. I mean, take a look here at this map of Freiburg. Just look at the number of local playgrounds around that there are for kids. And these playgrounds can actually be quite a bit different than the ones in the United States because not only do they often have different play areas for kids of all different ages, but they also tend to foster a sense of independence and self-reliance by actually allowing kids to do things that might be considered, well, a little bit dangerous in the United States. Some of them feature rock climbing walls. Other have ropes that are suspended about a couple meters off the ground. But it's these kind of spaces and just quite frankly, the sheer number of them that really make taking your kids out and about for a fun time part of your everyday life because you don't really have to travel very far to find one. And just like I was speaking about earlier at rest stops, playgrounds can also be found at the majority of rest stops in Germany as well, which is, again, fantastic when you're on those dreaded road trips with your little ones because after a couple hours, they probably need to get out and stretch their legs. And the majority of rest stops in the United States are, quite frankly, for cars, so you probably don't feel very comfortable letting your little one just go run around. But in Germany, actually providing these play areas for kids is so wonderful because they get to get their wiggles out before we continue on onto our journey. So the next item on my list is bike paths. And this is something that I've actually made quite a few videos about on my channel before, but it's worth mentioning again, because the sheer proliferation of these bike paths and the bike infrastructure in Germany has been just so wonderful in comparison to what I experienced in the United States. Now, don't get me wrong, there are actually some really nice bike paths in the United States, but a lot of them, again, are destination bike paths. And the ones that you see within the cities are usually just bike paths that are part of the streets. One that, quite frankly, I probably wouldn't feel very safe towing my kids in a bike trailer or letting my three-year-old, who's currently learning how to ride his bicycle, ride along with me. But here in Germany, a lot of these bike paths are actually separated from the streets altogether, which means, again, that I not only feel safer as a mom, towing my kids along, but that again, as my kids grow up, they can actually go from point A to point B independently and safely on these bike paths. Now, the next item on my list is one that actually might not seem so obvious at first, and that's farmer's markets. Now, this is just generally a community space, which means that the very young and the very old all get to participate here in their shopping experience. But if Jack was with me today, I think he would probably tell you that this is his favorite item on the list. And that's because, I kid you not, every time we head to the farmer's market, that kid gets an entire free meal. We stop at the produce booth and Jack always leaves with either a free apple or a free banana. Then we head on over to the butcher, at which point he always gets a free sausage or a schweibeliona to snack on his way. And then at the end of our journey, we head over to the bakery cart where the vendor so kindly always gives him a little mini pretzel for the road, which again is so cute. But it's so wonderful though too, because as I go along these shopping trips, I find that it actually makes shopping a lot easier. If my kids get snacks along the way, they're content and happy. They're also a little bit occupied, but it also again, just makes me feel as a parent so welcome in these spaces that 
you know, shopping with kids, especially in this like group setting, one that's really open is sometimes difficult with little ones around because you kind of got to keep them with you and contained. But in these cases, my kids actually shop along with me and they get to participate in that, which is so cool. Next up on my list is grocery stores. Now, grocery stores can be a bit tricky with little ones. I'll even admit that. But one of the things that I like so much about my grocery store experience in Germany has been that, again, my kids actually get to participate in the shopping experience. And when they're an active participant, not just a bystander or a kid that's being asked just to sit in the cart and wait, they have a lot more patience, which is really important. But they also learn the skill of helping to pick out what we're eating and help to plan our meals together. And I find that my kids are actually a lot better behaved when they have an activity to do. So at our grocery store, they actually not only have little mini grocery carts for the kids to go shopping around, but they actually make the different shopping areas a lot more interactive for kids. For example, this spot in our grocery store has a live webcam of the free range chickens where the eggs come from. And that's a spot that, again, Jack always makes us stop and see how the chickens are doing that day, which is really cute. Now, I will admit this next place on my list doesn't technically fit my initial requirement of being an everyday space, but I wanted to mention it because it is just so cool. Recently here in Germany, we went through Carnival or Fasnet or Fasching, depending on where you live, it of course comes with different names. But these festivals specifically are so wonderful for children because at least in our area, they actually have an entire day of this festival with specific activities that are kid-centric. For example, during Fasnet, they not only got free pretzels and free Wurst, but they had whole displays for the children to actually participate in the different traditions, to learn about those traditions. And it was just such a really fun community event that happened to be kid-centric. But it was also nice because, you know, Carnival or Fasnet or Fasching is part of the whole community. So the kids really do feel like they're a part of the celebration and not just an afterthought. And at least for me as a foreigner living in Germany, being able to take my kid to things like this have made all of the difference in just making us feel so much more well integrated. But also, again, like there isn't these parts of life in Germany that are only for adults or only for kids, but that they really make an integrated effort for all of us to have fun in our own way, which is really nice. So next up on the list, I wanted to talk a little bit about public transit in Germany. Now, granted, if you live in a city in the United States that has public transit, you're probably going to find some pretty nice family-centric things too. For example, you might have a nice place to wheel a stroller onto your streetcar or onto the subway station. But in Germany, I really do feel like they take this one step further. For example, on the train network here in Germany, not only do they have whole train cars that are devoted to families, where kids can run up and down the aisles and talk and chat and you don't really feel like you're disturbing other people. But if you want, they even have family cabins that you can reserve that have closing doors and special decorations that are specifically for children, which makes the entire experience so much more fun. And especially as a parent, and especially as a parent who might be traveling on public transit, being able to feel like you're not a bother to other people, but also make your kids feel like they can have some fun, especially on those long distance trips, is really just so refreshing and something that, again, I found to be one of the most surprising culture shocks after moving here to Germany. Okay, now, last but not least, you're probably wondering where I am even filming this video today. And that's right here at the Rothaus Brewery in the Hochschwarzwald in Germany. One of my absolute favorite places to come with kids. That's right, you heard me. Going to a brewery is one of my favorite places to take my little ones. One of the biggest culture differences between life in the United States and life in Europe is a much more relaxed and community feel around wineries and breweries. In the United States, these are very much adult-only spaces. And the vast majority of wineries aren't also going to have spaces dedicated for kids. But that cannot be further from the truth than here in Germany. Not only does the Rothaus Brewery actually have one of the most epic playgrounds I've ever seen, but their beer garden space is so much more of a community space for the very littlest ones and the oldest ones to enjoy. People are not afraid to bring their kids here. In fact, they're encouraged to do so. 
And being able to feel welcomed as a parent to bring your kids to a brewery doesn't simply just mean that I'm able to actually find moments to relax a little bit more as a parent. Again, drinking responsibly. But I think there's also just this sort of idea that these spaces don't have to be separated. There's, I guess, almost an opportunity for me to help teach my kids that drinking isn't something that is done in excess, but that you can enjoy a beer responsibly or alcohol-free. Heck, there's an entire menu of non-alcoholic beverages. But it also means that these community spaces can be enjoyed by everyone. I don't know. I just find that like this space specifically, which is why I wanted to come here and film this video, is just one of the standout places that is so dramatically different from the United States. Because again, I just feel like this is one of those spaces that you can bring your kids and it makes just a world of a difference in living a life that isn't before kids or after kids, but just life that's great regardless. But yeah, those are my top 10 places that at least for me are kid friendly without being kid centric. And that have been perhaps the most surprising thing for me as a parent living here in Germany. But I realize that's not an exhaustive list. So if you have places that you think deserve to be on this list, please let me know down in the comment section below. And as always, guys, if you enjoyed what you saw today, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. And for more content from Type Ashton, hit that subscribe button. So I'll see you next Sunday. Cheers.